If you're like me, you learn Java best by examples. And today I have three try-catch Java examples for you. And if you watch all the way through, I guarantee you, you'll walk away a better programmer. What's up? It's Alex back again, helping you learn Java. On this channel, I make a Java tutorial every single week for you to learn Java quickly. So if you're new here, then consider subscribing. We will start off this try-catch Java example project by going to file new Java project. Call it like try-catch. Hit finish, right click on source and go to new class. We'll just call it like try catch examples. Hit this first check mark and then click the finish button. Let's both start off by creating an array and trying to do something bad with the array. So we'll make an integer array. So we'll say int and then the square brackets. This is just how you declare an array. We'll say a equals and then some curly brackets and then we'll put our elements in the array like this. So we'll just say like four, five, and one. Out of curiosity, let's just see what'll happen if we try to get an element out of here on the third index. Since indexes start at zero and then go to one and two in this case, there is no element at index three. So we'll just try to print that out. A at index three. Okay, finish it off with a semicolon, save it and run it. And let's just see what happens. Ooh, and we get some colored text here. It's red and blue, so you know it's not gonna be a good thing. The first word here is exception. A try catch block helps us handle exceptions. I made a video covering exceptions. You can check it out on the screen now. But to recap, an exception is pretty much just kind of like a friendly message saying exactly what rent more, what rent what went wrong at exactly what line at exactly what file? So it looks scary, but it's actually extremely helpful to help make your code work. For example, this exception, it says in thread main, that just means in this main method here. The name of the exception is java.lang.array index out of bounds exception. So just that word alone, array index out of bounds, helps tell us, hey, maybe the index in your array was out of the bounds of the array. <laughs> And then it says at try catch examples dot main. That's just the name of our file. Try catch examples dot main. And then it says this seven at the end and that's line seven right here. So if you read it that, like that, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's actually pretty helpful. Now let's use a try catch block. What we can do is type the keyword try and then some curly braces and it'll try to do whatever's in these curly braces. So we can try to get the index three of this array. But if an exception happens from that code, we can catch it and do something else. So we can say catch like that. And then in this parentheses, you'll put an exception. So type exception, you can do different kinds of specific exceptions, but I'll get to that um, near the end of the video. We'll just call it like E and then some more curly braces. We'll save it and run it and see what happens. And nothing gets printed out. This is the exact same code, except it's inside of a try catch statement. What's happening is we're using the array incorrectly. Like we're getting the, trying to get the third index when there's actually zero, one, two indexes. This causes an exception, but when the exception happens, it, run code, it runs code inside of here. And right now it's not doing anything. So if we like print it out, um, an exception happened like this, save it and run it. We would get the code and exception happened. If we did this correctly like this, um, index, uh, we'll say index zero, save it and that should get four, uh, save it and run it. And we get four. Now let's try a more real world example, like something that actually might happen say with a user, because usually users will not, users of a program will not have access to like getting an index of an array, but they might have access to entering a wrong number or a wrong input value. So we can do that by starting over and making a scanner to try to interface with the user. So we'll say scanner, I'll call it scan equals new scanner. And we're just gonna get input from this console win window here and that's just called system.in. Finish it off with a semicolon, you'll get some red underlines. Um, just hover over it and click import scanner, java.util. 
and that'll bring that scanner code into our program so we can use it. We'll prompt a user for a number, like, um, what's your fave number? That, and now the user's gonna enter something. Hopefully it's a number, but if it's not a number, we might get an exception. So let's try to handle, see what, see what happens there. We'll say int n equals scan.nextInt to get the, the next integer that the user enters. So we'll save it. Actually, we'll try to print it out. And we'll save it, run it. What's your favorite number? Say five, enter, and we get five. But let's try it again, but with something that's not a number. So we'll run it. And we'll say like, um, pigs, enter. Ooh, and yeah, we get something scary, an exception. But remember, it's not scary. It's just trying to help us figure out what we did wrong. But this isn't very user friendly. Like what if you got this text um, when you were trying to log in and you entered the wrong password? You'd have no idea what to do. So we can say like, if it's not a number, then we can send them a message saying, hey, please enter a number instead of this crazy text. So we'll put it in a try catch to catch this exception and instead do the code that we want. So I'll just cut this and put that in there. We'll catch an exception, E, and this will be the code when the exception happens. So instead of yelling at them an exception, we'll just say, um, sorry, please enter a number. Just like that. So we'll save this and run it. We'll say pigs, just like before. And now it says, sorry, please enter a number, which is much better than a big screaming red message. I'll just do one more try catch Java example for you. And look, you're already a better programmer just from these last few minutes. So just like we handled an exception and instead did a message, Let's try to do that with different kinds of exceptions. One piece of code that can cause a lot of different kinds of exceptions is doing something that's null and also an array. So we can make an integer array A like we did before, except now set that equal to null, which is kind of like nothing, it's like empty. And we'll try to print out A at some index, we'll say one. Okay, save it and run it. And yeah, we get an exception as expected. And this is a null pointer exception, which is the name. So instead of catching an exception like this, here, we'll just make another try catch, stick that code into here, catch exception E, like we did before the last two times, instead of catching just a generic exception, we can catch a specific exception. So we can say null pointer exception. If it's a null pointer exception, we can say um, your array is null, like that. Save it and run it. And now we get that message for that specific exception. But if A was actually um, not null and it had values, like say it just has one value, that would be A of zero, but we're trying to get A of one, it doesn't have it. So we'll save it and see what happens there. We get another exception, even though we have a try catch. I'm just gonna space this out a little bit so we can see sort of what's going on more clearly. Now we're getting an array index out of bounds exception, which is different than a null pointer exception. So we can catch um, that exception as well. Array index out of, oh, this is a long one, bounds exception. E, like that. We'll just print out um, a different message. Your index is out of bounds. Save it and run it now. And now we have that handled. And for any other exception, we can just throw on a catch, any other exception, generic exception, and then print out something else went wrong. Something else went wrong. And this is how the internet and like your favorite websites and programs handle things like this. So if your like username and password doesn't work 
the validation of your username and password in their database might throw an exception like um, username and password doesn't match exception, something like that. So they would try your username and password against the database, but they would also have a catch like a catch username and password doesn't match exception. And then that would display like a red message, try again, password and username did not match. So I hope that these three try catch example Java programs or little codes I did for you helped. If it did, I'd greatly appreciate a like, or even if you want to learn more, I post a Java video just like this every single week. So you can subscribe if you want more of these. And I really appreciate you being here. Um, thank you for letting me teach you and I'll see you next week. See you later.